Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer. I'm your host, Lisa Caslin, and today we're welcoming back our old friend, Louise Nicholson, who is uh, an expert on travel to India. She's a tour guide, and she's written many, many books, including uh, National Geographic Traveler to India. Welcome back, Louise. Thank you very much, Lisa. Good to be here. Good, good, good. <laughs> so I know you have uh, done a lot. It's almost been two years since we've had you here. I can't believe it's been that long. So what have you been doing since uh, since we last caught up with you? What are some of the cool tours you've been doing? Well, I've had a great two years. I've helped huge numbers of individual travelers do much more exciting things. Quite often they come to me saying, oh, I want to go to Delhi or go to and so I spend a lot of effort uh, introducing them to ideas of adding at least one more offbeat place they haven't heard of. And when they get back, that, that's normally been the top site. So okay. that's exciting. Um, and sending them off to Ajanta and Alora, great early sites, or to Nagur, which I think is probably the most beautiful fort palace in Asia that you can stay in. It's divine. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've been doing some new trips. Uh, including a very, very exciting one where some people came to me and asked me to help them go to South India to attend the blessing of a new Buddhist temple in a special Buddhist piece of land that India gave when the Dalai Lama was thrown out of Tibet. And Dalai Lama, His Holiness himself, came to bless it. And then we had three days of teaching. And uh, mm. that was perhaps a climax of all I've done. Wow, that is fantastic. Now, wh when you say southern India, what region in particular was it? So this piece of land um, is not really very well known. Uh, it's more Dharamshala up in the Himalayas that people think uh, His Holiness uh, mm -hmm. is given and is always at. Um, but in fact, lots of different states in India were invited to give pieces of land. And this is Karnataka state. What, so the piece of land is west of Bangalore, the great IT center. And you drive hard and as fast as possible for about five hours until you're in the lower rolling hills of the Western Ghats. And you arrive at a place called Bailo Coupe. And it's a large, large piece of land with many farms and universities and rebuilt temples and many wonderful Buddhist people um, doing great things. Wow, exciting. Okay, so when the last time we talked to you, I w I put you on the spot and I, I made you come up with your five favorite destinations. And I know that's hard because you have been everywhere in India. And I'm going to try to name them again. If I mispronounce them, you'll correct me. Mumbai, uh, Rajasthan, Tamil, Nedu, I think you mentioned Nedu or Nedu. Yeah. Ajanta, Alora, and Sikkim. So today, do these remain your top five or do we have some uh new contenders well, the thing is the place i've most recently been studying tends to start trumping the other places because <laughs> everything in india is interesting uh -huh. so there isn't a sort of bad patch of india everything is interesting and usually has great richness and variety um, and i especially love textiles and there's always a local weave going on mm -hmm. um Sikkim, I think, has become a problem for for my kind of travellers. Um, if you want to go to northern Sikkim, you have got to go up a tortuous road, which unfortunately at the moment has lots and lots of lorries on it um, with carrying concrete and things because they're building some dams up there. The, the Indians and the Chinese are building apparently 400 huge dams mm -hmm. and so although it's a sort of botanical delight to get to northern Sikkim it's quite a mission to get up there and for western Sikkim there used to be the most wonderful hotel which made the whole thing uh, worthwhile because you could stay in it for four or five nights and do all sorts of different things but sadly this hotel has slightly gone down mm. actually quite a lot gone down and mm. so um, I think Sikkim is rather difficult to visit just at the minute but mm -hmm. Um, never mind, because I have another idea. Okay. And the place I'm crazy about at the moment is Central India. Mm, I okay. am mad about it. Because you can do a trip there, which is five-star site after five-star site. There are also nice places to stay. 
you have great variety of geography. Um, you can cover everything from early Buddhism through the early, before the Mughals, who we've all heard of, but there were great Islamic uh, cities there before. Um, you have Hindu stuff. Uh, you have some nice heritage hotels. You can have delicious local country food, which is the best food in India, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and the places aren't too far apart from one another. It's a win-win situation. Oh, yes. And in central India, the government of the great state there called Madhya Pradesh has spent millions on new roads. So you go from place to place um, on a smooth road, which oh. isn't always the case in India, in order to see great things. Mm -hmm. You quite often have to go bumpity bumpity bump. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, you mentioned uh, Pondicherry? Yes. Pondicherry, I think, is a really good, um, quite a hot destination at the moment. I would put it above the more familiar choice of Goa, for instance. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't have a fantastic beach, but then if you come from the States, which have stunning beaches up and down both coasts. You, you can't really expect to find that quality all over the world. But what Pondicherry has is um, a very, very strong um, conservation body there. Mm -hmm. And the people who have gone into the old French Quarter, which has row after row of gorgeous houses, mm -hmm. sort of maybe it's half a mile square, mm -hmm. um, the people who've gone in there are mostly very discerning people, either Indians or Indians with Europeans, because that's how you own property there. And they have worked with the local conservation body and done fantastic, sensitive, beautiful, high quality restorations and renovations. Yes. And they have created um, a real good number of charming heritage hotels, some more expensive than others, standalone restaurants, standalone bars, great boutiques with the wonderful contemporary Indian fashion. And it's all walkable and it's very congenial. There is still a kind of slight whiff of French mm. colonial about it, mm -hmm. but it is more and more Indian. It's, it's a beautiful fusion. And I think that's a great place to go after you visited, say, Chennai, and then the early sites of Mahabalipuram, and before you go inland in Tamil Nadu. Okay. And I think you were talking a little bit about um, an increase in heritage hotels, and there was some near Calcutta? Well, yes, they're popping up in the oddest places. Hmm. And, you know, in the old days, it was just Rajasthan. And then there were some really great ones in Tamil Nadu. Uh, the CG Earth Group is one notable one. And then they started popping up in a little bit in central India. But eastern India was really not, not on the plan at all, on the map. Now there's a beautiful mansion outside Calcutta, and um, and I'm happy to help anyone who wants to visit there. You you would want to spend, say, five nights there, probably. It's got a great spa, but it's also got really interesting cultural things to see around and about and the Bengali lifestyle. And you're not too far from Calcutta, so you could go in and see the sites there, but not have to stay in the, you know, legendary thundering city. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's cool. beautiful. And not so far from there, too, are the most beautiful, like, mini temples that Ooh. were built on terracotta, uh, built of brick, and mm -hmm. then coated in terracotta picture tiles mm -hmm. all around. And they are really heavenly, and they're only in that area. Hmm, wow, that's unique. Okay. So I know that uh, a lot of your clients are, are single women. Yeah, yes, uh, that's my big, big increase. I mean, okay. my most recent tour, I had 14 people, 12 of them were singles and one couple. Okay, well, that's and interesting. my 12 singles, 11 of them were women. Okay, so I like that. And I, I want you to talk about that because there's a lot of women and, and they, they reach a certain age, maybe they, you know, they're over 50, they have some disposable income and they want to take this trip of a lifetime. And they say, well, I don't want to do it by myself. So you're bucking the trend. 
Why not? You can do it, right? So talk yeah. about how does that itinerary get developed? Are you calling the shots? Are you taking sort of, um, you know, sprinklings from your client base and say, okay, hmm, I think I know what I'm going to put together for this group. How does it, how does it play out? First of all, I usually think of the idea, but it could be that uh, something is happening in an area, something is developing. And in the case of Central India, the roads improved so that we could access extraordinary things that we could not access before. Uh, I, there's one extraordinary site, a whole medieval city just sitting there. I mean, it really is simply wow. Sitting there with incredible high quality stuff, plus all the weavers are there working away. So it's not a dead city, if you like, it's a living city, but it's it's untouched. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to go three times, and three times the road was washed away. But now there's a real good road. So in a way, that was a catalyst for making a terrific trip through central India. Mm -hmm. um, and I my client base are people who are curious and happy to go the extra mile to see something amazing. Okay. And so I developed the trip, and then I put it out there to my clients. Okay. And I think people should know, I mean, when they travel with you, they are traveling with a, a, an art historian, somebody who really knows her stuff. So it's it's really looking through the eyes of somebody who understands the art, understands the culture, and is really imparting that onto your, your clients as well as taking them, you know, to this to this beautiful destination. Yeah. And it's not as narrow as that either, because although uh, at base, I am an art historian, an architectural historian, and that therefore means a ton of history as well. But I am, um, I think, of, since I started going to India, which is nearly 40 years ago, I'm really interested in local cuisines. So we always seek out good food. I talk to the chefs. They do demonstrations for us. They give us recipes. Um, oh we also go down into the markets and see what is being sold there, what's being traded. We go to private homes, which is really great for people. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot of local interaction. We're not in some sort of sightseeing bubble. Mm -hmm. And then also I'm mad about textiles, as I said, but also other crafts, quality crafts, mm -hmm. and finding them, letting my clients understand why they're great. People learn very fast. People who perhaps have never had the good fortune to see extraordinary things um, learn very quickly when they see something fantastic. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, and then they patronize those craftsmen, and that's good. Mm -hmm. Sure it is. Okay, so before we let you go, uh, is there anything that we should be mindful of if we're planning that first big trip to India? Anything that we should you know, really consider? Um, I think less is more. That okay. is my big mantra. Go to fewer places and possibly stick to just one or at most two areas of India. So that you could sort of get grips with um, one of the cultures because there's so much going on there. Um, try and spend sort of, you know, three, four nights in, in one of the places, even if you dot around for the others. Um, the next thing I'd say, it is not essential to visit the Taj Mahal. It will be there when you next go. Okay. Um, and it isn't everybody's top building in India because India is awash with fantastic sights and experiences. I think those are two things. And the third thing, which is not exactly self-publicizing or self-promoting, but, but I would be part of it, is do take some solid advice from people who have spent many, many years going to India and studying India, mm -hmm. rather than your neighbor down the road who's been once on a Delhi Agra Jaipur trip and mm -hmm. says that's what you must do. Try to think broadly. And it really doesn't matter if you don't visit the famous areas because the unfamous areas, the less beaten path, are often the most rewarding ones. Yeah, the true culture. So Louise, if people want more information about you, where do they visit you online? What's your website? They go to louisenicholsonindia.com or they email me at louisenicholson999 at gmail. Perfect. All right. So we're going to have you back again, maybe next year. <laughs> I look forward, Lisa. And you should come to India one day, too. I will. And you're going to be my tour guide. I'm happy. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.